So welcome to my bedroom. This is where I'm currently at <laughs> at the moment. Yeah, cool. I like the floor that you added. Yeah, it's not too far away from the floor that I have now. Um, it's like the generic apartment hardware. Yeah, and your desk, is that clean? Is there anything on your desk? Um, I was actually thinking about like modeling all the trash that I have on my desk at the moment, but. <laughs> <laughs> And the, okay, so the images on the wall above the bed and the desk, those are artworks that you've made or artworks you're thinking of making? These are artworks that I've made. Um, they're, the, they're part of this series called Lost Ads, and I've been putting them on my Instagram for the past, um, I guess, month or so now. Mm -hmm. um, so, okay. previ so previous to this, I was doing a series of works that are all on foam core. Mm -hmm. um, it was this idea of messing with process. Um, so I would print something out um, and then maybe have a photographic component and then maybe have like a vector component and then maybe have like a, a 3D render on top of it. And then I'd print it out and then I would mess with the printout of it, um, adding paint splotches or adding like um, some scribbles or adding a, a few different um, elements to the surface itself. I would scan that back in. And then I would print out a full size, like 24 by 36 version of that scan. And yeah. um, I'd mount that to foam core. And then um, they usually have some outline that was a little bit like this. And so uh, it was just this idea of like kind of messing with uh, of different elements and um, all of them kind of colliding together. There really wasn't like a plan for them. They were just, um, because I, I had them in the solo show that I was in last February. And someone put it, put the, put it to me in a way where it's like, it's, it's almost like having multiple windows on your screen mm -hmm. and how you have all of these different pieces of content that don't necessarily yeah. interact with one another. Yeah. And I, thought, and I was like, oh, that's actually a great way of thinking about them. And then, um, and then, despite that knowledge, they were getting, I think to me, a little bit too uh, pictorial. It was too much of like a scene that was happening inside of, the, uh, inside of the image. Especially when I stopped doing so much photographic material and started doing more 3D renders, because then that could be like an actual scene. But then, but that was actually the kind of downfall of the series, because there was this one piece that I made that was, uh, miniature kind of yeah a miniature scene that was ha was happening and um as much as i liked it i realized i couldn't do anything to the surface of it like i it was like it stopped there and th with the point of the series being kind of like messing with the surface of it um i found that was kind of um limiting the the word the text and the imagery where was that coming from these come from my sketchbooks. Um, I might overhear something in a bar. Or I might overhear something that someone that like my friends say, or I'll be on yeah. the subway, and um, I'll write it down. Or also, it kind of comes from these like, yeah. So like, please stop having fun. For instance, that's been that's like a um, a slogan that um, has popped up in my sketchbooks for a while. So that it's kind of like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. And there's like a lot of good, like deadpan humor in them. Feels kind of sincere, but also really absurd. What What about the shapes? Um, the shapes also come from my sketchbook. Um, some of these are like my friends. I ask my friend to do my friends to do all my sketchbook when we're out sometimes, and they become yeah. these. Uh, and they become these shapes. One of the ideas for the process of these uh, of these um, pieces was about kind of surrendering autonomy to uh, uh, of the process to different to different like facets, almost kind of like um, outsourcing different bits of the artistic process in a way. Yeah. So these um, these backgrounds, for instance, are um, made th made somewhat through machine learning. Um, I have an application. It's called Runway Machine Learning. What what does is it, it you can you give it an image set, you give it a data set, 
and then it will look at the content of the image of the images in the set it will try to um and will try to make something close to what that to the patterns of whatever it was that it was given there's another component that checks whether or not the uh, pixels that were generated are close to what was in the set. And if it's approved or if it's declined, it will um, it'll, it'll kind of keep working itself over and over until it tries to get something that's closer to what it was that, that you put, that you, the, the data set that you put in. Hmm. So you're like, you're putting in imagery that you're interested in and then it kind of outputs something connected to that imagery. Like it outputs an image that already exists or it creates an image from those? It tries to create an image. Cool. So That's this cool. process, um, this process, I think, is like what people. This is how I got into it because it's basically, I think, what people first have experimented with, and one of the first sort of examples of artificial intelligence art. It's like I'm sure you've seen like the most. The there was that um, example of a of a portrait that was generated through uh, artificial intelligence that. Um, um, was yeah, sold they make for a painting, right? Based on the based on the image that's filtered through. Yeah. So what they did, they uh, fed it like all the all like um like basically the history of portraiture, something like ten thousand or thir or ten thousand images of portraits, and um, of oil painting portraits, and it spits out um, images that replicate the patterns of those portraits. So it's not an actual like. So obviously the, the, the machine isn't looking at, uh, this is an eye, this is a nose, it's just looking at the way things are laid out. So they all look kind of like bacony. they all look like Francis Bacon's. Yeah. Um, but I was in a meeting, or not meeting, I was in a presentation where uh, of um, artificial intelligence art and things that were, good things that were doing with, uh, with AI and machine learning. And um, I had this thought of like, treating AI almost like an assistant designer or something like that almost like a almost like my intern mm -hmm. and instead of giving it like uh, in a corporate sense and instead of giving it like zenith of a human achievement oil portraiture or like a very high cultural thing I would give it a bunch of like advertising backgrounds and a bunch of like powerpoint backgrounds so then I take it into illustrator and then I might do that's like the most artistic it gets almost. Right. And then um, it's this process of, uh, I have all these other elements that are in a, an Illustrator file and I just collage a few things in. I may add this like paint splotches. I have like another document of just paint splotches and whatnot. And then add these like images or these are uh, texts or these, well, these, uh, these like sunflowers are from um, a get well soon um, bouquet. So that's where those- yeah, um, I mean, Oh, go ahead. Oh, uh, no, I was just saying that's where this comes from. Like, Yeah, I mean, I think like what what your friend said about them being the sort of like computer tab iteration of like the kind of like near explosion that happens for most of us when we're kind of like overloaded with visual and like digital stimulation rings rings true to me. But I, I also think about just the, the kind of like physical nature of moving through space and being confronted with like actual material um and just i don't know i think a lot about like gravity in these <laughs> flat spaces because it does feel like that like you're kind of moving through this digital world um it's funny to think about like kind of en entering one of those and what that would feel like or sound like what the um what the like kind of neat regardless of how like kind of insane it can be, like in terms of how many like tabs you may have open, it's still like a very organized system in a sense. And what would it be like if that was actually a phys represented in kind of a physical space as opposed to a digital recreation of physical space? Is that what, mm -hmm. what, would, what kind of like logic would happen if these were more organic as opposed to uh, um, these things could evolve and um, develop their own sort of sense of like what they look like as opposed to something kind of neater or something like that. Yeah, I, I like, I don't know, I have a few ideas floating through my brain, but I haven't really processed them all. But I'm just thinking about like associatively, like the relationship to advertising. And do you remember in Minority Report when Tom Cruise walks through the mall and like the billboard kind of like reads his eyes and like processes what he likes and kind of spits back another ad. 
Do you know what I'm talking about? Unfortunately, I've never watched Minority Report. Report. Okay, maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> All that important, but just thinking about like this kind of. Um, I played the video uh, game. There's a video. What? Game. There's a video game based on Minority Report. That's the. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it's worth watching or not. It's been a while for me, but like, uh, the only reason I bring it up is because I'm just thinking about like different ways that people have tried to manifest the experience of like being confronted with advertisements and like every day or just like not just advertisements I mean I think you're using the language of ads but you're really talking about like the ways that we self-soothe and like confront our own feelings and like daily thoughts <laughs> and observations <laughs> um it, like with a lot of humor I think it seems you're kind of making observations about those kinds of like personal reckonings um yeah. And so it's like the only reason I brought that up is because, again, I feel like like you're talking about this idea of like, yeah, what if they were a world that was organized that you could enter? And yeah, what would that look like? Have you ever manifested them as like something other than a flat space? No, um, I have not, unfortunately. That's but like. The not oh, go ahead. I think it's like, I don't know. The. I have to I have to think about like what I want to do with these things actually in like a in an actual something that's like just not on my computer something that's actually like oh um, yeah well I mean I, it makes me think a lot about VR which I know we were talking about but also I saw some images on your website of sculptures yes um, and yeah it made me sort of wonder like in the context of some sort of installation or something that people could enter what kinds of materials would take on the same quality that this this digital space that is being pictured would you know takes right. on um anyways um so okay let me just take a look at these new ones it'd be funny if it was like this what i was kind of thinking is um as you as you as you may have seen i always had i guess the material struggle of my artistic practice and my artistic life has always been this con this kind of conflict between um things that are pristine and things that are like really, really handmade and really kind of messy. And it's to be perfectly honest, it was an aesthetic that kind of was born out of how I actually relate to these things. Like some people would be like, people would treat it as intentional and I'd be like, oh yeah, of course. And then I'd be like, no, that was actually just how it, <laughs> how it came mm -hmm. out because of the time constraints or because I'm like not that good actually of a, of a craftsman. So it came yeah, out. But I yeah i like still though you make like you make a choice to say like this is done and so there's something interesting i think about the chance of like like you're like you were describing before letting the mechanism make some decisions for you and yes. um and kind of like fo following that as um you know as a place to find answers and make decisions yeah and this is definitely a lot of like it's almost like surrendering a lot of the point was like kind of like surrendering a lot of the autonomy and like really limiting my decision making process. She's like, <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I love the transition um, with those dog faces. Yeah. It's really funny. I don't know what uh, these are. So these are, um, I, I don't know how they're pronounced, I, but they're like Samoyeds, I think that's how they're pronounced. Uh -huh. um, from what I've read, they are like one of the most expensive dog breeds in the world. Yeah. Um, I think, I, I, I think like the highest I've ever seen or that the highest that was reported, it was like, just like on like a website was that these can kind of, these dogs can go for like $13,000. <laughs> I just watched your video. I, I really, I was like um, really tickled by the casualness of your, your research and numbers. <laughs> 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 yeah. this is like something so um like off offensive but also like very real about the way that we process this kind of information which is like alarming and and concrete at the same time uh, I'm al i've always been interested in um really replicating my um my view of certain things and my view of um particularly of of things like advertisements um the built environment and like kind of like the late capitalist way of that we sort of inter like that we interact with 
with things today, which sounds, I think that sounds very vague, but what I mean by that is this uh, trying to cr possibly critique something by kind of getting into its sort of mindset and just trying to, and kind of um, making work in the shadow or in the, or in a reference to that thing. Totally. I mean, did you ever see the, you know, those old act up videos? I think they take on a very similar tone. Um, mm -hmm. Just this kind of, this kind of mocking that, that is, yeah, again, like at first offensive, but then you hear the content and, and you're on their team actually, but the way that it's disseminated is, is um, confusing and I think calls attention to the problem, you know. Um, wow, those apples, holy cow. Okay, let's see. What is the, what is the friendly from? I don't recognize that. Um, I do not know. I just thought it would be, I thought it would be interesting to have a artwork where it was, um, oh, I, they're actually from this, um, I had this idea for what were, were called travel companions. And mm -hmm. what they are, they're, they're bags, uh, and they're like anthropomorphized bags made out of like nylon. And, um, um, and uh, I was just thinking about them and I thought that like in the future, I would like to have like little things that say that they're, that they're friendly, that they're. Uh, <laughs> 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 it's, like, it's hard not to read content right now in, in like relation to what's happening in the world. Yeah. And it's so funny, just this kind of like absence of, I mean, I have, I have no idea like how, how much contact you've had with the outside world in the past 20 days or so, but um, it's just the, yeah, the idea of like having an object as companion right now feels much more prescient than I think <laughs> it might have, you know, in, in a recent past. <laughs> um, okay, so they would be like actually in that shape or something else that's more body they are i guess they're a mix of um one, one second i'd be very curious to see them if you're willing to share <laughs> yeah let me let me see if i can oh man those are so funny yeah what the hell wait can you bring it lower what's with the pockets so these are these are like these pockets are to give it a kind of like a um, um, a different reference, like a like a you can carry stuff in it, like what? You can put like Come a ball on. in there. <laughs> and I was I was almost thinking it kind of like a um, a, a way of giving it some simple like biology. So yeah. Have, like have a maternal reference. It's so funny. Wait, can I see the back of it? So you guys a strap like this. Uh -huh. You can also <laughs> carry it like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much. And uh, okay. these are so these are these are I'm calling these prototypes. Uh -huh. um, oh, and they also have a zip up top. You can put stuff okay, here. Okay, so it, it's stuffed right now, but yeah. Yeah, oh, man, that, that's great. That's awesome. This is the blue gun. <laughs> so it's got a pocket down here. Oh man! It's also got. Um, it's basically a neck pillow and a backpack. Yeah. Yeah. So it like rides on you like this? Yeah, I think people are gonna love it. Oh. Yeah, yeah, wait, get closer. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so that project has been in the works for quite a while. And um and and just because it's like there's like no bit but no particular reason for it. It's just like I get I guess it's just like uh um um, trepidation about wanting something to be kind of perfect and then like you sure. so you like always are hesitant to actually get started on them sure. and so you think in the mind in your back of your mind whenever you like like you're like oh I should work on like that project today and then you stop and then you don't actually work on them 
but you come up with other things that are like in relation to that project in a sense like oh i don't know if that's just me but it's like this kind of like weird sort of fashion industry influenced kind of thinking of like oh well we do that project but like, let's make some accessories for it or something like that yeah so these were like so that's where some of these come from i was like oh they should have like little things that just say they're friendly um and then um, I just used them for here because I was like, it could be just, I don't know, just like cool to have artwork that kind of states their sort of mindset <laughs> and sort of like, or like, or like. <laughs> it gives you a clue. <laughs> yeah, it gives you a clue. How, in the sense of like how you might, um, of how you, you'll, you'll go to a gallery and someone will have their dog there and they'll be like, yeah, you can pet them, like sort of that They're kind of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, like give you an entry. But it also picks up a little bit of the language to me of like um school or like scholastic classroom or um even art store advertising aesthetic where it's it's meant to be um like you said, friendly and like approachable, but it also to me ends up feeling um like a block because it gets like so evened out that that you can't read a personality, you know. Yeah. It's just, like it's like too consumable. Yeah, too consumable. Um, um, a sort of idea of generic approachability that like removes content. I think. Yeah. Um, these are these are like between the three that are up right now. Though they all read to me in really distinct ways. Like the like the one in the middle feels more cutting and the one on, on the right feels just very sincere. Actually, it's like, yeah, that's good information. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, there's something like that's like a little bit more approachable about that. And, and the, yeah, I just think the way that the text and the imagery interact, they all kind of take themselves in slightly different directions tonally. Right. Um, yeah, I think that's like, I love seeing the view under the bed and thinking about like s like sneaking up on the work and like coming at it from a slightly different point of view. There's something really fun about just the idea of seeing the artwork in a private space. So I hate flying and I try to distract myself every time I fly. I find it super unpleasant. Mm -hmm. And I was just sketching a few things that were just in the airplane. And one of them was the no smoking. Um, cool. And this and this text is uh, from um, Sukiyaki, but the American version or the English version of Sukiyaki. Uh -huh. Imagine if this, it was this easy to rehang a show. <laughs> Dude, it'd be. <laughs> oh man, that'd be so. Do you ever catch yourself doing something physically and wanting to do Control Z? Yes, all the time. <laughs> all the time like uh it's also fun to see these like do you ever think about putting them on the ceiling or the floor so many options i don't know yeah it makes me realize how like limited my imagination is with something like this just because it's like <laughs> oh <laughs> like do you have a ceiling in your room <laughs> Just open air, it, yeah. <laughs> I, guess, I guess it makes it easier to see when you don't have a ceiling showing in this kind of rendering. I don't know how to do it like The Sims, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This looks pretty good. <laughs> These are wild. Zan is that Zantac? What is Zan? Yeah, it's Zantac. It's like a sense. Me and my buddy bond over our mutual. Um, gastrointestinal problems. Zantac is a is a is a uh, as is an acid reducer. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Um, I had I like a. I saw that in another one of your images. Yeah, I use them from. I had like a. I had a pretty bad bout of anxiety when I was um going through uh doing my solo show last year, which was it was it was like it wasn't it was it was not a horrible like big pressure but I kind of made it into something like that yeah and um um I went to the nurse at 30 Rock and she was like and she was like I can't really give you anything for your uh for that but I can give you certain things for your for your um some for like the things that you feel and one of yeah. them was like um uh so she gave me some Zantax 
I use them from time to time in my work because it's um, just like a like a like a like a, a weird sort of talisman of like almost seeing it can make you. I don't know. <laughs> Wait, so it says life is work, work is practice. Yeah, life is work, work is practice. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, I realize I don't have. I have to really kind of concentrate, think about how to actually take advantage of this medium that these, because these are, that these are in, I don't know. I guess, I guess just the thing about them was that um, I kind of kept a, a, a reference to like what could be actually made. Uh-huh, sure. What's the smaller text on that one? What does it say? Uh, well, these are dark. Yeah. I think my friend said that one time. It's like <laughs> yeah. we, were, we weren't talking about we weren't talking about anything serious, and then it was just Real like, talk. and then I was like, yeah, and then it like it's now become very like. <laughs> wow, so heavy. Yeah, they they kind of flip you a little bit. And I think that's pretty. I think that's like that's kind of been a very active component in my work as well um um using these kind of like i don't want to say necessarily corporate but things that you would associate with more corporate like like the context of a mall for instance those kind of materials that kind of the kind of language that you that you experience yeah. in um just like a built late capitalist environment and yeah well yeah it seems like they they're using the same tricks to pull you in, but then they they really stick you with something <laughs> that you wouldn't have expected to have entered. Um, and it yeah, it's like kind of a a dark, scary place. I think mostly, I mean, it, it already would have been, but I think it it hits you harder because of the surprise factor. It, it just really sneaks up on you. And I like seeing them get pushed up against the wall. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Feels like they're about to move right through it. <laughs> hmm. This is the second friend is resource. Right. Friend equals resource. That one doesn't feel as sincere. Or maybe it is. <laughs> it's like literally, I guess. Yeah. What do you need? Yes, that's another. Um another buddy of mine. Um, um he always he always chooses, I think as like a lot of us, he chooses the bar as the place to to deliver deep critiques of your work and our work oh, which, is, which is fantastic but it's yeah. also like you can never remember it the next day like right. it's like what what were we talking about like you mentioned a really great point and you'd be like i don't remember that either but yeah. i do remember that one time he was saying something about me making like that like a lot of, that some of my work was like kind of like very sincere memes which um if it's the read that it gets, then that's fine. Then that's fine. I don't have any issue with it. Like, yeah. but um, I don't know. But you were into that read. You liked it. I did like that. I do like that. Uh, uh, nonsense of it's like of like a viral of like a virality or or um, that kind of like kind of idea, but just in the sense of like, I like um. When you follow, when you look at memes on Instagram and you recognize that's from a source, but you don't, really, but it's been mutated so much that you don't really know what the source is now, or when you see someone like a like on YouTube that's like making a making fun of something or whatnot, and he puts all of these um, memetic images on the screen, and if you aren't cued in onto what they actually mean, it's just this mess of different of like cartoons and stuff it doesn't make any sense in a sense in a way i think that's more of the process that i'm kind of interested in more so than i don't know like a quick i don't right. know i guess it can be helped sometimes sure i mean i guess i was more interested in the creators project one around the like the question that's asked right next to the google logo which is like what do i do next and I don't know. In my mind, that's that like kind of hits on what a lot of the work does is kind of try to answer these big questions in this yeah. like very simple way. You know, yeah. <laughs> like, like either like try to po like po posit a question or provide an answer. 
And I think there's something really comforting about feeling like someone else is asking the same question. <laughs> and right. I always like, I always love in a TV show or a movie where you see a character searching a question that seems so ridiculous to ask a computer or machine, but we all do that. All the, yes. like it's very relatable. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, so I don't know for me, like that, that was like the part of that piece that felt, and like the, there were a few of them that you brought up recently that like the cutout shape reads more like a figure and uh -huh. a figure, a figure that is like floating or flying. Like there was one right before that was in the middle section that had almost like wings. It looked like a crucifix that was rising from the bed when you started what laying it in into the space. And um, anyways, I just think it's funny because I'm, I'm seeing them in this way where I'm like watching you move them and float. Um, yeah, I just, I guess, like, I, I just relate a lot to the more existential pieces <laughs> of, like, mm -hmm. kind of trying, trying to find meaning in something that's quite flat, and um, that, like, those two things bumping up against each other. Right, and, like, <laughs> like, that you brought, like, someone trying to Google something very big. But... Yeah, like, what do I do with my life? Or, yeah. like, when is this going to end? You know, like, just any of these questions that are, like, like totally impossible to answer. And yet, we, like, you put it out there because there's a place to ask. And, you know, maybe <laughs> something. Only... Yeah. And I think with I... something like that, it's, like, not only is, not only do you realize that people have the same questions, but people are also attempting to answer it in the name of, like, content and in the name of, um, of, um, like like you know ad sense and stuff like that and yeah but like what comes up in your video i think and what comes up for a lot of us okay. if you do like you know with sincerity or even as a joke try to search these things is that like the absurdity of the ways that people are answering these questions and the range with which they like <laughs> attempt yeah. to solve problems is um yeah it's just it's just so ridiculous <laughs> and um, but also, but also sweet. Like it's just, it has all of these, yeah, all of these ways. Um, these fleshy colors. Funny. That's just that's that comes straight from the machine. Apparently, like apparently, these are these are the colors that people like to see. Sure. Blues, yeah. Pinks, <laughs> like pinks. I've been working with a lot of young kids this week, doing some drawing lessons, and the like the number of times. A mermaid drawing session has been requested is a little confusing to me. <laughs> Wait, what is in the text? Oh, it says lifestyle in the background. Yeah. Oh. Is that is that trending at the moment? Like I haven't paid attention. Is is oh I think trending? maybe for six year olds that's a pretty a pretty standard <laughs> for a six year old. Oh, right. I don't know. It's like when you realize that um, social media has created this whole sort of youth culture in the in like the the six and younger crowd. Yeah, it's weird because you'd think that like from like from my six year old, you know, point of view to a current six year old point of view, things would have shifted a little bit, but it, it doesn't really feel like it has much. I think that's the part that's kind of more confusing to me. Um, right. That like something commercially is still holding holding enough weight to keep those few elements in, you know, prime <laughs> spotlight <laughs> territory. Um, wait, can I see the one on the left too? You're not part of the problem. And it's just one of those, one of those, um, um, uh, silica packet logos on silica packets in, um, like beef jerky. What? That's the logo. There's this. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have anyone any with me, but it's like, I obviously you won't keep something like that, but it's like, right, those, don't eat it. <laughs> yeah, those don't eat it. I just found one. I thought that was, it was so funny. I, I uh, uh, recreated it. Yeah, that's great. Cool. Well, these look awesome. I'm glad to see the, the group of them. It's fun, fun to see the range. I hope I get to see one in person someday. Yeah, I guess that's kind of my, um, my, because this project can go in ways where I'm thinking about these these the images developing these things in a three dimensional landscape and exploring the possibilities of a digital um, of of a digitally 
and also or um, exploring it physically. And um, that's the kind of like, not conflict, but it's like, oh, maybe uh, uh, it's like just something you have to think about, you know? Yeah, see, I mean, I'm, I'm always sort of more is more, but it feels like they could exist in all three places in, in slightly different ways, maybe. I would totally wear one of those, <laughs> if you use that textile to make clothing, yeah. I would be very much on board with that. But I don't know if that's what you meant by textile. Maybe you're just thinking of it as like a fabric for something, something else. It could be like, that's the thing. It could be clothing. It could be, it could be just a soft sculpture. It could be wallpaper, yeah. you know, stuff like that. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, like because of those backpacks you showed me and the idea of like comfort or like, I don't know, that's what made, they made me think of like comfort, but also like maybe some, something, <laughs> something else there. But, uh, but yeah, I just think of even like a blanket or, you know, what, like yeah. what kind of materials you want to touch or like have like a, a relationship with or use as a surrogate for some kind of companion. Anyways, mm -hmm. it's fun to think about. I think there's a lot, there's a lot of possibilities there. Thank you. I'm glad that, yeah, um, no, I'm glad to see them. Thank you. It was like, at the beginning, I just had absolutely no idea what these would do. Like I just, because, because there's, it seemed at the beginning that there was so, like, I didn't know, like, how much I believed in them, and I didn't know how much, like, but then I put the first few on Instagram, and I got, like, a nice, and I got, like, a good reaction, so I was like, oh, I think I'm going on a, I think this is a, a good yeah. direction, I just have to explore it more. Yeah, I mean, I, like, I have no understanding of how they behave physically as objects, but I guess because there's so much digital language there, like, I feel from just my limited experience with them that like I would be happy to read them as a projection in space or like you know on a wall um or like you said on like a material like clothing or you know some sort of fabric surface so yeah. like I guess because like I don't have it as, as many concrete associations with their original state like I I feel more pliable in terms of like seeing them translated into different media that could be that like there really is like no native state for these things. I guess, I guess the, yeah. the, the image of the render is the, the original state, but that's not really, I don't know if that's really true in a, in a, I guess, metaphysical way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna pick my feet up off the ground for the rest of this conversation. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, well, this is really great. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to try this out. Um, I hope, I hope the recording generates something and and if it does, you know, I'd love I'd love to share it in whatever way you think is interesting. So, um keep me posted if you want to send it to me, I'd be happy to look at it and you know, we can talk more about different ways to to yeah. Of course. I don't know, thank minute. you for um thank you for doing this. Oh, totally. No, it's so great. Sweet. Okay, good luck with everything. Talk soon. All right. Bye.